So thank you everybody for, uh, for attending this session. And uh, uh, it's going to be a little bit non-traditional, um, a little more interactive as well. Um, so there are some people that are, that are in the audience that knows me um, that might give you a little bit of their own opinion on certain things to do with recording, because I don't want to just stand up here and tell you about why you should record and it's for compliance and it's for quality management, which they are, but there's a lot more to it than just, uh, you know, it's how you've actually perceived um, what uh, recording in a real world and a real live environment. So looks like the button's working. Um, so as you all know, uh, things are changing and have changed rapidly in the last few years. And the latest stats from Gartner is that by 2025, 75% of all intercompany communications or meetings will be recorded. Now that's saying one thing is they're going to be recorded, but how? And um, once they're recorded, what do you do with them? Um, only 10% of recordings these days are really actively being used for analytics or any other purposes other than just pure compliance. So there's a lot of value in all this data. Um, you know, the common saying is data is the new oil. Um, so how do you get that data? How do you extract that data? So maybe just a little bit of insight, especially when it comes to teams. How do you extract that data and how do you use that data efficiently? So again, another stat that came out recently, 270 million monthly active users on Teams. Um, thousands have increased in video calls and meetings. Um, you know, the hybrid workforce obviously growing rapidly. But also some other stats is there are about 80 million Teams phone users and between 27 and 50 million users on PSDN calling. So again, there's a lot of data, a lot of conversations happening. How do you get these conversations? Um, how do you use these conversations? And um, again, through teams, making it a lot easier to grab and, and capture these, uh, these conversations. So how does teams change everything? So in terms of everyone that's familiar with legacy recording on other platforms, it's quite a cumbersome task. It's you know, putting in uh, servers, mirroring uh, a port on a, on a phone switch. It might be a via multiple registration or IP office, Cisco built-in bridge. Teams has made some, some great advances in the compliance API, and it's still advancing um, in order to improve things with regards to, uh, to recording. So what that has done as well, companies before that have been forced to maybe record a, a small area of the workforce um, because it's just was something they had to do, being able to make it easier has been able to help people expand. And um, we're, we're going to talk a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, through that as well. Okay, so the, the process of deploying teams and making it a successful implementation is firstly, you know, understanding that you need it, um, also then planning that deployment and then implementing the deployment. So those three, three things all work in different ways because there's lots of promises. Um, I can always tell everyone I'm more on the sales side of things, so I'm the promise maker. And then we get back to the planning and the implementation, which are my promise keepers. Can you really deliver on what you are saying you can uh, deliver on. So we're going to evidence that today. We're going to talk through a few real world environments where we've deployed for customers. We actually have a customer here in the audience today who's going to tell you a little bit about their experience, um, as well as we have some partners here as well to tell you about the journey our partners have had. Um, and some of them, not only in the team space, have worked in multiple or different types of integrations. Now, I don't think there's a mic for the people in the audience. So you're going to have to hopefully speak up a little bit. Someone told me earlier that they, that uh, a little bit of alcohol is good to get your, wind, your your vocal cords going. So I had a bottle somewhere. So if anyone needs, we can we can always do that. Just by by show of hands, even who's had anything to do with recording before? Who's implemented it? Who's okay? Who's so besides implementing, who's actually used it? Okay, so we have people using it as well. So that's a, that's really uh, that's a good thing. Okay, so. What we're going to talk about first is um, one of our, we had a recent uh, experience with a European bank. Um, unfortunately, they, they, their, 
um, legal requirements, and not to mention names, but as you can see, they're a pretty large bank, over 53 billion in Europe um, in, in assets under management. And really for them, it was about regulation. So they had to record because in terms of regulation, but part of their slower migration to teams was because of this, this regulation of recording and they were just hesitant to move to another platform because of the, 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 the level of difficulty for them to move to it. So what was Im important to them was through a process to find a solution that would help them while they were moving to teams to go quick and to go easy. And we were fortunate enough to help them. We recorded it using our solution. Um, I haven't mentioned yet, our solution is called IX Cloud, but this is more to be more of an agnostic session on understanding recording, but we implemented it in a very short amount of time, and really that is that is the comment that we got from the customer below. It just works. So we were fortunate enough, and we'll go into maybe just at the end, so we leave some time um, to explain how simple and easy it is to deploy and some of the benefits of, of flexibility in Teams recording, but really we got the term, it just, it just works. Um, I have this in the presentation, but I'm fortunate enough to have that gentleman with me, and I need to find him, but um, there we go. We got Tom over here. So Tom is from Willis Towers Watson. Um, I'm sure they, they need no introduction. They're heavily compliance related, but um, we successfully deployed with them, and perhaps maybe just from the perspective, and, and maybe not just saying it works, if Tom could maybe just, uh, just give you an understanding of why they needed it and how simple and easy it was to deploy it. Yep, sure. so who 
weren't meant to be there. Uh, parents, you know, taking litigious because there were some really uh, not appropriate things going on. So also we've seen schools also looking at teams and it's helped them to adopt because it's so simple um, at teams as a method of giving these lessons to their students, of uh, enabling good collaboration in these higher education spaces. And through that and recording that, they're able to better better understand what everyone is doing and, and make sure they are compliant and meeting, meeting all the compliance uh, uh, requirements within their organizations. Um, so just a, a few of our, our clients that we do have, uh, don't want to really uh, go too much deeply into it, but you can really see um, from the scope of the different clients we're working with, from finance to security to, uh, we do the treasury of, a, of one country, the treasury departments, we do energy. So really we've seen the, the, global, the global scope growing really rapidly into who needs recording and again in teams being able to make it really simple and easy. So just to, just to give you a couple of those really, really um, important elements that we've been able to achieve with Teams recording, um, that's, that's really given an upgrade from your typical recording environments. Um, there's no hardware or software required anywhere in the deployments that we do. Um, we can natively record audio, video screens um, without putting anywhere or anything in anyone's environment. Uh, we comply with all the different regulations in the in the in Europe, the UK, US. Um, some of the, the additional benefits we have to comply with those is elements such as bringing your own storage, so customers can put their own Azure storage blobs into our platforms. We're launching a new opportunity or a new option now coming up as well, where you're able to deploy your own dedicated instance of our solution as well, so that you're able to uh, record and maintain everything in your environment as well. Um, other things as, um, and this is probably one of our biggest benefits that we give to clients as well, is we've built a rules engine around Teams where you can get more granular. So basically, the native way to record Teams is putting an enterprise app in your, in your applications. You create an uh, application instance, a recording policy. You assign those policies to the users that need recording, and it just records everything. What we've been able to do is, outside of that framework, is say, okay, we want to only record calls coming to specific call queues for those users. Maybe only record certain meetings that have certain keywords in the title. Um, external participants, so if someone joins a meeting and they're from an external company, it'll start recording. As soon as they leave, it stops recording. So we've been able to get really, really granular in automating those scenarios that many companies would have said, okay, we want to just record these people because that's the, you know, limited to them. We're able to now say, no, you don't have to, if that division doesn't need internal calls recording, don't worry, we'll leave that up and you can you can focus. And the, the user interface is really intuitive to set it up. It's not like legacy where you, you have to, you know, look at where the media is flowing or where you're going to take a port mirror. This is all natively within an easy to, to access GUI where you simply switch, swipe little toggles and you can choose what you want to record. We also have a native Teams app built in for record on demand <coughs> and PCI muting to comply with those regulations as well. Record on demand is an important one because typically that little convenience recording button in Teams um, can or doesn't comply. Um, it puts the recording in a SharePoint instance or in OneDrive, which then allows someone to delete it. It's not compliant. Um, in our case, it will store those calls alongside all their other compliant calls, which are encrypted um, and secured by granular roles, permissions, access requirements, and all those items. So again, because our platform is also built into Azure, and the service fabric, you're able to really scale starting from you know, X users and scaling up really to wherever you want to scale to. So before I open it up, and I wanted to leave a little bit of time for some questions, Q&A, I also have a couple of uh, partners that work with us within the, um, within the audience here, who I'd like maybe them also just to expose uh, or, or give you a little bit of their experience, because <coughs> some of them have, do have experiences within other industries as well with recording, recording other legacy, recording um, other PBX platforms. So perhaps we can start even right over here 
and that might tell you firstly where he's from and how his journey with recording has been transitioning from legacy platforms over to Teams recording. into just about everything and what we've been able to help people with as well is that combination of the two. We typically call those integrations our hybrid integrations. So if you have any, let's say you're running still part of a company on, on Avaya or Cisco or something else or you have CIPRIC enabled endpoints that are not connected to teams for survivability, you can do both in one platform, synchronize it to a single uh, pane of glass. So you have multiple endpoints or capture endpoints that, that all end up in one unified interface and I think that's important because we haven't only done um, teams we've done some combinations of other deployments with them as well and before I move to a, another one of our partners that I see there over there Tom um, we um, we we are enhancing the platform we already include transcription and key ba keyword based searching so you can automatically transcribe uh, the conversations that you're having or the meetings you're having search by keywords some of the features coming up uh, in the in the not to distant future, we, we're doing team, uh, Teams desktop screen recording, so not only the VBSS, which is recorded uh, natively in Teams, but also if you wanted to monitor the actual desktop of the user while they're busy on Teams as well. Um, another sweet spot for us as well that's coming, which we always supported, is live monitoring, the ability to listen in live on conversations that are happening in Teams as well. Um, and then some other enhancements to our app as well, our native Teams app. Um, we currently do provide a very, well, it's a complete standalone UI that you would log into, but we do have a light interface within the Teams app that you can access it, but we also have a Teams app coming up, sentiment analysis, automated QA and quality management scoring, and then some other interesting um, blockchain-related audit trails and, you know, trying to really get deep into that, uh, into the compliance aspects as well. Um, so another partner of ours there, he's sitting there on the end, Tom, maybe you want to just rail, and, and he's actually had some dual representation for us, so maybe he can just tell you a little bit who he is and uh, and how his experience is with us as well.
in the old world, so in the US, be it whatever, with this simple marketing model, as long as we say the US, the larger economy in the UK, you know, all of the other side, around the arts, that's what we're doing for the Thank you, thank you. And another another one of ours that I, I just uh, happened to see her this morning. So, Andy, if you want to say a few words, that'd be great. And then I'll open it to, up to anyone else who has any questions for us as well. Thank you so much.